What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and CDS, and we're going to look at a CDS trigger called when a record is updated. So what this trigger allows you to do is it allows you to run a flow once a record is updated, and you can also specify if there's a certain field you want to trigger um, the update from. So let's take a look at it. I'm in Power Automate at the moment and I have my flow open uh, and right here I have Common Data Service Connector. So if I click on that, I have a list of the uh, triggers that I've got access to uh, and the one I'm going to use today is when a record is updated. So when I click that I have three options and I have an advanced uh, some advanced options down here. So the first option I get is environment. So I can specify the environment that I want this to run in. Um, if you have multiple environments, so say you have a sandbox uh, as well as a production, you can specify which one you want uh, this to run in. Um, this has the ability to use like uh, a current um, system in here, um, like the, the current environment, so this is the environment you're in, or you can specify an environment as well. So I'm gonna choose the Matt demo uh, environment here. As I'm doing that, you can see that, that just changed the loading and the entity name. That What that's doing is that's going off and that's finding a list of the entities inside of my demo system. So entity is uh, the record type that you want to look at. So in our example, we're going to choose accounts, but you can search through these for anything like you know opportunities, etc. And it'll start bringing back everything you want. Uh, I'm just going to look for accounts because it's nice and simple and it's right at the top. Next, we have scope. So this is the um, security context in which this will run. So will this run um, just on the, the records that the user has access to? Will it run um, from, a, uh, from a business unit standpoint, from a parent-child standpoint, so anything in a parent business unit and below? Will it run across the whole organization? Um, this is where you can figure that. Um, there are loads of details on dynamic security and I covered it a lot in the last video, so I'm not going to go over it too much in this one. But for my example, I'm trying to choose organization. Now, like with the uh, when a record is created trigger, um, these are the three um, required inputs. But unlike that one, I do actually have some optional inputs. So if I click on show advanced options, I have this attribute filters here. So what this allows me to do is this allows me to um, filter the attributes that I want to trigger this flow. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can I can say I only want to trigger this flow when this attribute is changed, meaning that you won't have uh, flows constantly triggering and constantly um, updating when any field is changed. You may only want this to run on a certain field. So, for instance, you could say when the customer like the account rating is changed then trigger a flow to uh, let someone know that the the rating on that account has changed or maybe you have some sort of integration with your business central system and when the account number is changed you need to then trigger that to update business central or something like that or some address changes or anything like that so in here you can filter what you want to add so if we click here, we then get a list of all of the fields um, inside of uh, that entity that we're looking at. And these are the schema name for the fields. These aren't the field names. So it is something to be aware of. Uh, if I find one here, Matt combined lang lot, uh, lat long. <coughs> that is uh, a custom field that I've made. I know that because it's got a prefix of Matt underscore. Um, we also have the ability to add custom uh, values into here if you can't find your specific field. But generally, what Power Automate will do is it will query that and bring back the list of fields. So uh, I could change uh, maybe account number on here and get that to run. I can also add another one in here. So I could say uh, maybe I want to do this. Um, based on, uh, unfortunately there's no search bar in this, which is slightly annoying, uh, name. So maybe I want to change this on the account name. Uh, and maybe I'll add another one in for uh, account one post road. Postal road, that'll work. Mm -hmm. So I now have my three filtering attributes. So if any one of these is changed, the flow will trigger. 
um, then um, we have some other options here. So we have these little drop down, this menu button on the right. This allows you to delete filtered attributes. And we also have this button, which will switch it from this nice handy pick list to an array. So you can see your attributes in an array format. So if you actually have the attributes that you want to filter already in an array, you can just paste that in. Else this handy picker uh, allows you to create it as opposed to having to create an array, which, uh, you know, whenever you can avoid creating arrays, that's great. So what we'll do here is we will create a compose action after this, just all um, flows need at least one action. Click compose. And in the inputs here, we're just going to choose the uh, account name. So uh, similar to my last one, um, if the name is changed, if the account number is changed, or if the postcode is changed, we're going to run this flow and we're going to put that into a compose action uh, down here and then um, we're going to have that as an output. So what we will do is we will test this out. Click on test. I'll perform the trigger action, save and test. And we can now we can now see that this is off and this is waiting for an input and everything disappears. So if I flick over to my dynamic system, I have a test system here um, and I can trigger this flow by doing a couple of things. So I could change the account name. I can change the account number is one of the things that we added in there. And we also have postcode down here is one of these fields, although I can't remember which one it is and the labels aren't on the form, so that's great. Um, so uh, what we'll do is we'll change the account number and we'll put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and we'll also, uh, and we will click save. So it does run on save. You need to wait for for the form to save uh, before the flow will trigger, um, meaning that you do have um, a little bit of time. <coughs> the only other thing to mention is that Dynamics does have an autosave function. So if that is turned on and someone types something in and then tabs away from it or clicks away from this page, that is actually saving the record. It doesn't just um, wait for you to hit save. Uh, it's one thing that I draw on a lot about in training, just to make sure that users know uh, that this system will autosave, which is of course a feature that you can turn off as well. Um, I'm talking to try and give this flow some time to run, but um, this is an asynchronous flow. It will take a few minutes to go off and poll the CDS database and come back. So I'm going to pause this video and we'll help, um, we'll um, catch back up in a few minutes. So the flow has run and we can see it. So we've got when the record is updated, we can see some information here about um, the flow itself. So the environment, the, uh, the entity name, the organization. Uh, we can also see the output. So we have a JSON um, output here with a load of details. Uh, we have this in a bit of a neater way inside here with um, details of like the field names and stuff like that. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see the uh, test account three. That is the name of the account that we run this on. And there we have it. So that is a way to trigger a flow on update of a record and you can filter this so that it only updates on certain values. If you don't add those filtering attributes in, it will up, it will run every time a record is updated, no matter what field it is. So please be aware of that whenever you're creating your flows and make sure you choose, um, you make sure you filter your attributes to make sure you don't have hundreds and thousands of flows running. Uh, and with that, um, I hope this video was useful. Um, if you use this, let me know in the comments down below what you use it for. Um, if you found this video useful, please like and please share it with your friends. It's always appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.